Hello everyone, George here, and this is a redo of videos one and two for the Five Nights at Freddy's series I started a long time ago. Things have changed a lot inside of Unity, and I wanted to do an update video for two reasons. One, Unity looks nothing like it did back then, and I get lots of comments saying, does this still work in the latest version? The second reason is because for some reason, YouTube has a problem serving this video to people in a resolution higher than 360p. You cannot see the code, you cannot follow what's going on. So we're gonna go ahead and redo this entire video. Now, unfortunately, the video itself is kind of lost to time. While I was able to download a version of it, which you see here, and I'm gonna use that as reference. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to understand is we're gonna be using a program called Unity, which is our real-time rendering engine. However, we're not just gonna start with Unity. We're actually gonna start with a program called Unity Hub. Over here, I have Unity Hub already installed. You're gonna to wanna to go to your favorite web browser, install Unity Hub by going to a search engine, searching for it, and installing it. At that point, you're also going to need to install a version of Unity. Here you can see I have several different versions. The purpose of Unity Hub is to actually manage multiple versions of Unity on your computer. What we're going to do is go to Projects and create a new project. Under New Projects, we're going to get different templates. We're going to start with a 3D core scene. The reason for this is because all of the assets that get created in the series align with the 3D core version of Unity. If you want something that's more compatible and that will work on a multitude of different devices, you might want to consider 3D Universal Render Pipeline, which is this option right here. We're going to go to 3D Core, and we're going to need to give this a project name. In the original video, I call this a night at Georgie's. I'm just going to call this FNAF for right now. I also need to put this at some location on my computer. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my desktop. The desktop is not the best place for you to place things, you should probably have a project directory or something else you're working with. In fact, I'm gonna come here, go to new and create a new file. I'm just gonna call this FNAF Remake. Later on, you'll see that I use a whole host of different applications from Blender to Maya to Substance Painter to create different assets and even Photoshop. So under FNAF Remake, I'm gonna come under here and actually create a new folder that I'm gonna call Unity. This is not the only way you can work, but it's the one I'm gonna do just so I separate all of my different projects. I'm gonna go into Unity, Hit select folder, and that's gonna create for me a new folder called FNAF. I'll now hit create project. You're not gonna get this warning. I get this warning because I messed up all the permissions on my personal computer. In fact, I'm in the process of moving over to a new computer right now, but you'll notice that I'm running Unity with administrative privileges. It recommends that I, I don't do that. I'm gonna say, I don't care, continue at my own risk. I know I'm fine, it's not gonna be a problem. You're then gonna be presented with this Unity splash screen. The splash screen you see is going to be dependent upon the version of Unity you decided to work with. I'm working with a long-term support version of Unity, 2022.3. You can work with any 2022.x.whatever. dot whatever. I highly recommend you stick with a long-term support version. That version is going to have updates, but you don't need to worry about functionality being deprecated or removed from Unity, just bug fixes. All right, Unity has opened, and what we'll notice is we have a screen, we have a scene screen, a game screen, we also have a hierarchy tab, an inspector, and a project view. We're not gonna go over everything here. This is not a Unity 101 tutorial, but I am gonna explain a few things as we move along. The purpose of this video is to talk about creating a camera manager. It's gonna be a script that we program, which is gonna allow us to move between different cameras in the scene. In this video, we're gonna talk about setting up each of these different cameras, creating a script inside of Unity, and then linking these cameras to the variables inside of that script. If we look here at the previous video, we can see that I had recorded a scene of Five Nights at Freddy's. Here we show you an overhead map of the different cameras, each one labeled camera at 1A, 1B, and so forth and so on. We're gonna create that initial part and work with those in subsequent videos and add additional functionality that lets us move from one camera to the next using different keyboard commands. So let's go ahead and create our first script. You'll come over here to Project down here. Project is synonymous with your entire game. When I talk about a scene, I actually refer to a level, and that's what you see in this hierarchy panel over here. Now, personally, I don't like the way Unity lays things out, so I'm gonna move things around by clicking and dragging different elements. I literally click and drag on the name up here of the tab, and I can move them to different spots on the screen. I like to have the biggest viewport possible when I'm working with things, and then have my project down at the bottom, my scene at the top or my level, and then my inspector, which allows me to edit different properties of individual items within my game world. Here we have a scenes folder. I'm gonna actually click here, right click, and go to create and a new folder. This folder, I'm just gonna call scripts. 
Inside of scripts, I'm gonna double click and open it up. It's empty. Let's right click, go to create, and create a new C Sharp script. Scripts are the way that we add new functionality to our game. You'll notice that the script is created and it has a blue highlight. This means I can rename this script right now. I'm going to rename this script Camera Manager. Hit enter. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that script and it's going to open up Visual Studio, which I had installed with Unity when I did my installation. If you look at other videos in the series, I'm going to be using something other than Visual Studio. That's because this video series started a long time ago, back in 2015, and many things have changed. For the most part, many people work inside of Visual Studio when they develop. It has great Unity integration, and I recommend it because it gives you things like IntelliSense, and it really just helps you code a lot faster. Here we can see that I have a public class called Camera Manager. You'll notice that the name of the class is Camera Manager. Had you decided to click outside of this area, so for instance, if I go over here and I right click and create a new C Sharp script, and I clicked outside of this area, now if I double click on this new script, you'll see that opens up inside of Visual Studio, and the name is New Behavior Script. The name of the class matches the name of the script you gave it. Now if I come over here and I change this name over here to Cam2 Manager, and I go back into Visual Studio, once it's finished loading, you'll notice that this name did not change. That's usually a problem, number one thing people get wrong, so you wanna make sure that name matches the same name as your script. So I'm gonna call that Cam2Manager. I'm not gonna use this script, but it's just an example to show you how things can get kind of unsynchronized or desynchronized between Unity and Visual Studio and the class name and the name of the file itself. I'm gonna hit the X at the top to close that script because I don't need it. I'm gonna go back to Unity and actually, Let's go ahead and delete that script because we don't want to work with it. I'm going to right click on that and hit delete. I'm going to say yes, go ahead and delete it and now it's gone from my project. Scripts don't work unless they're attached to game objects. And right now, this is my sample scene. You'll notice that there's an arrow over here. If I press that arrow, it'll show you the default objects added to my scene. We have a camera and a light and nothing else. I'm going to go to game object, create empty, and that's going to create an empty game object. Right now it's called game object. I want this to be my camera manager. I'm gonna call this Cam Manager. I did not choose the same name as my script, and I did that on purpose so that you see the name of your game object does not need to match the name of your script. So I can click on Cam Manager, and you'll notice that my inspector comes to life, and it gives me a transform. This is a position, a rotation, and a scale inside of my scene. I'm gonna click on my script and actually drag it over to add my script to that object. I also could have clicked Add Component, and then clicked on Camera Manager. You'll notice I already have camera kind of written out there. Camera Manager is a script, and a script means I'm adding functionality into my game. Right now, Camera Manager does absolutely nothing. Let's double click on Camera Manager, or just go back to Visual Studio, and look at my Camera Manager script. The first thing I need are references to my camera objects. I plan on having cameras all throughout my scene, and I want to be able to link from one to the next to the next, moving from one camera to the other. I need a reference to those camera objects. So I'm gonna create public variables that allow me to access them. So I'm gonna type public. The type is camera, that's the class. And I'm gonna call it cam, and let's do underscore 1a. If we look back over here, we have a lot of different cameras. I'm actually not gonna do every single camera. I'm gonna leave it up to you to look at this screen and add every single camera that's in Five Nights at Freddy's. And it's up to you to add cameras 1a all the way through, it looks like camera for B. So now let's add public camera cam underscore one B. Now just to change things up a little bit, I'm going to do a public camera. I'm going to do cam underscore two, and it looks like there is a two A and a two B. So we'll make both of those. It'll be up to you to add the rest of the cameras as a challenge. By making these variables public, it means that when I go over inside of Unity, once the script has loaded, I'll actually be able to drag and drop cameras in my scene into those spots. If we go to my camera manager, which holds my camera script, we can see that I have camera underscore 1a, underscore 1b, underscore 2a, underscore 2b. You also notice that it says none and that it's expecting a camera object here. So if I create cameras and drag and drop them into those spots, there will be a link between the object in my scene and that code. So let's go over to game object 
and we're going to go down to camera and create a new camera. I'm going to call these cameras the same as they show up in Five Nights at Freddy's. So let's call this camera underscore one A. I'm in my game view right now. I want to make sure I'm in my scene view. You might accidentally be in your game view. The game view always shows the current active camera. I'm going to click scene tab and you'll notice that I have a bunch of different UI elements showing up. These UI elements show the cameras in their locations, the directional light, and many other objects inside of the scene. I'm going to click on camera 1A. I'm going to hit the F key to frame up on it. Frame up means it's going to show me the object within my viewport. If I ever get lost, I can always click on an object inside of my hierarchy tab and hit the F button for frame up or fill or full and I can find my object. I have my camera and manager and I need to add my different camera objects over here so I can access them in code. I can click and drag that object there, but it's highly likely that you're going to accidentally click somewhere else. And when you do, such as when you hit camera 1A, you're going to notice that the inspector changes and you lose all of the information that was on camera manager. The easiest way to fix this is to make sure you press the lock button in the upper right hand corner. This locks this window so that regardless of what object I accidentally press, I'm still going to see the camera manager, the thing that I pinned down. Now I'm going to go to camera 1. I'm going to drag and drop that into camera 1A. Now I need other cameras in my scene. Easiest way to do this, because I already have a camera, is hit Control D. Control D duplicates an object. You'll notice that I now have a cam underscore 1A and a cam underscore 1A1. I'm going to hit F2, selecting it first, and I'm going to change that name to camera 1B. I'm going to go ahead to my viewport, and I'm going to click on these different arrows. RGB equals XYZ. So if I click on the red arrow, I'm going to move in the X direction. And all I want to do is make sure that these cameras actually see something different. When we have actual geometry in the scene, we're going to move these cameras to the appropriate places. If you want to, you can kind of look at this overlay right here inside of Five Nights and Freddy's and try to move your cameras to replicate what you see here. But without anything in the scene, it's kind of hard to do that. So we'll have to come back later and add some geometry. So I have camera 1A and camera 1B I need to have. I'm going to click on this one and drag it into 1B. I'm then going to click on both of these. I'm going to hit Control D again, and that's going to duplicate it twice. I'm going to move them off center. And you'll notice that I have them up here in my hierarchy. I'm going to go ahead and rename these by hitting the F2 key, or I'm going to click and right click and go to rename. I'm going to go ahead and name one camera two and A. The next one, we'll go ahead, right click, rename, and call this one 2B. I want to make sure I click and drag these over here. So there's camera 2A and camera 2B. Importantly, I'm going to uncheck that lock button. If you don't uncheck that, your inspector is always going to show the camera manager. That's the fastest way to get yourself in a lot of trouble. Now that I have all these different cameras in my scene, we can see that as I move from one camera to the next, we get our different little previews down there. Now the part that you need to do is look at this menu over here of the different stage cameras and add a different camera variable for every single one in the scene. You're going to do that both in code and then you're going to come over here and create these different camera objects on this side. Now you'll notice that your scene begins to fill up with objects very, very quickly. One thing you might want to do is make these child objects of the camera manager. We can do this by selecting all of them and I did that by clicking the top, holding down shift, clicking the bottom one, which selects each one, and I'm going to click and drag on the camera manager. This is just a way of organizing things. There's other important things that happen when you make things a child of a parent, but you don't need to worry about them right now. I can click the arrow on camera manager and you'll notice all the other elements disappear. They're temporarily hidden in my hierarchy, so I have room to do other things. There's not a whole lot going on in our scene at the moment, so it's important for us to see something. So let's go to game object and 3D object and just create a plane. You'll notice that one gets created wherever the camera is centered and looking. If we come over here to the hierarchy and make sure the plane is selected now, under the transform you can see that it's at 2.8 something, 3.5, and 0.9. We can go ahead, click all these, and reset it to 000 if we want to, or we could click up here at this dot 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 and hit the reset button. We're doing this just so that we have something in our scene to see. If you hit the W, E, and R key, it allows you to move quickly between translate, rotate, and scale. I'm going to just move this off center and actually scale it up as well. Now my cameras are kind of half in my plane right here, which isn't helping me much. So I'm going to grab all of my cameras by clicking on each one of them and holding down the shift key. And I'm actually going to hit the W key to make sure I'm in translate mode. I'm going to move all of them up in the air a little bit. This way they're looking up. I'm also going to hit the E key to rotate. I'm going to rotate all of them to look 
down a little bit because remember these are security cameras. They're supposed to be up looking down. That's not a whole lot to look at in our scene. Let's go to game object and 3D object and create a cube really fast. And what I want you to do is to very quickly go through the scene and just lay out some cubes. Provide something for you to actually look at inside of the scene world using the translate, rotate, and scale tools to move objects around as you see fit. And you'll notice that as I do this, I move and rotate things, that you'll see them updating in the camera view down there. You should go through, add all the different cameras you want to in your scene, and then pick up from the next video. As a warning, the next video is going to go back to an earlier version of Unity, but hopefully you'll see that everything's pretty much the same. The interface looks a little bit different. I'm in dark mode instead of light mode, and I'm using Visual Studio instead of Mono Develop. But for the most part, much of the fundamentals of Unity have not changed. If you have any questions, make sure you post them down below because we're gonna lose all the comments from the last seven or eight years when I upload this new video. If you have any requests for me to go back and redo any of the other videos as well, let me know and I'll see what I can do. So long everyone, have a good night, goodbye.